We continue with the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. This week we saw something that I don't think many people expected. That was the Steelers released actually two players who failed physicals. First of all, it was Ladarius Green, a guy they gave a lot of money to, and then it was uh, Greg Warren, who's been here for a long time as long snapper. So in the draft, they drafted a long snapper because they obviously knew that Warren wasn't going to pass it. So why didn't they draft a tight end, I would say, Chris Mack, if you thought that Ladarius Green was not going to be able to pass a physical. Yeah, if they had any inkling at all about this, then I'm disappointed that they didn't take a good look at some quality tight ends that were available in the draft, which tells me if I'm going to give Kevin Colbert and the rest of the staff the benefit of the doubt, they didn't know. And it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't know, because I don't know if Ladarius Green and his people, his agent, whoever else were involved in his acquisition in the first place, were ever totally honest. I mean, would the Steelers go out and sign this guy with his history of concussions if they had known exactly what had gone on in the past and would they have not then gone out and gotten a tight end in the draft I think it would be negligent of them to not ensure themselves by going out and getting a tight end in this draft if they did in fact know exactly what was going on with Ladarius Green they're going to come to regret the fact that they picked Josh Dobbs over Jake Butt I think if you're going to look at this draft and where they could have gone with different picks bringing in a developmental quarterback who will not replace Ben Roethlisberger as the starting quarterback for this franchise over a tight end who had a first round grade and will be available to play in September, I think will be one of their biggest regrets. Yeah, I agree with a lot of that, Andrew. In fact, uh, they actually could have gone with another quarterback if Dobbs wasn't on the board, and who's to say he wouldn't have been. Uh, maybe they could have gotten Nate Peterman, who they also liked from Pitt by that point in the fifth round if they so desperately wanted a third-string quarterback. Uh, I would have gone tight end or inside linebacker in that fourth round, absolutely, especially tight end now. And to go back to Chris's earlier point, uh, what may not have been known to the Steelers after they were going through the free agency wooing process of Ladarius Green, a lot was known prior to that, like him being so badly concussed he missed a team flight Mm -hmm. and had to stay behind with the doctor. That information was out there in the San Diego papers dating back to before when they signed him. So uh, maybe I think that's why they were so um, constantly talking about his ankle, making it sound like it was an ankle, because they knew they took a risk on this concussion case. Yeah, right? it, it reminds me, it's like a pot committed thing in poker where you keep throwing it, money at something to fix a problem and it just keeps getting worse. They should have cut their losses with Green literally at the start of this offseason going into free agency knowing that they needed to address the tight end position. I, I believe that. Or at least taken that money that was allocated to Green and spent it elsewhere before cornerbacks and safeties and inside linebackers, guys at positions that they need, signed elsewhere. OTAs begin this week, the always exciting time of the year. And I'm wondering too, Tim, I'll just throw this by you. They drafted Juju Smith-Schuster, not just because Martavis Bryant is still on the risky uh, level until he proves otherwise. But maybe because they knew, you know, this, this green situation, he's not necessarily your blocking tight end. He's a guy who's supposed to go down the middle and do things. Right. Do you think that factored into it? Uh, yes, uh, I do. I think that was part of it. It makes a little bit more sense now beyond just the Martavis Bryant factor, both on the field and off. Remember, Kevin Colbert uh, was really um, talking up the ability for Juju Smith-Schuster to go up and make combat catches, tough catches over the middle, uh, combat catches is in the end zone. We had to battle a defender that's not been a strong point of Bryant's and maybe he was also sending a message that he can do that up the numbers up the seam uh, where maybe some other wide receivers can't because of his physicality. I'm, I'm starting to like that pick more and more all the time. And I, I think there's a possibility too that they might like what they have at tight end. I know Jesse James and Xavier Grimble don't get anybody hot under the collar but we see, saw both of them have uh, <laughs> quality moments last season I, I they're they're not I don't think the red zone targets yet that they need in a tight end but there's something to be said for what they can provide you know, when playing well Chris I get that they used the franchise tag on Bell so he's here and they gave Brown a lot of money and that excites uh, a big faction of the Steelers fan base but I don't really like their offseason to be honest with you the coach came out afterwards and said we had to play this way in New England because of our defensive personnel because of the secondary we have and what exactly has been done to fix that? A, a corner from Tennessee in the third round who was a better special teams player there? And Cody Sensabaugh? Well, they had a I fifth round to Brian Allen, who they think they like. But, but Brian Allen's a project, a project Bob, yeah, a and project. I like that I get pick. That. But he's not going to make them better in 2017. Would we agree that Artie Burns and Sean Davis got immensely better throughout the course sure. of the season, though? And they also got themselves a boost, I think, pass rushing wise. So they don't have to rely on coverage quite as much. Maybe they can get after. Okay, the guys. But case. the moral of the story is, when we get down to it, you're still going to have William Gay and Ross, Ross Cockrell, Cockrell on yeah. the field, 
in big games, and, and, and I don't like that at all. So, to me, if they haven't spent well, all the way... It was good enough to get to the AFC Championship game, Andrew, though, and you know, the, the guy on the other side that beats them is Tom Brady, who beats everybody. Okay. So, I, I don't know how, if the defense is as damaging of a prospect as you are suggesting until they get up against Brady, who's going to beat you anyway. Tim, you had a chance to, to sign a, a, a playmaker, a difference maker. You had him in your building, and you didn't do it. Oh, hey, look, there's no bigger advocate for Hightower than me. That I okay. wanted, yes. But does anybody think Dante Hightower was really going to yeah, sign here? but I didn't think he was going to come. <laughs> That's what I wanted, but leverage. I wasn't optimistic about it. we got to go to a break here, guys. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Pirates, win another series today, uh, got a nice pitching job, and also uh, Andrew McCutcheon, still batting way lower than he should be, and this week we saw something that we've really never seen with Andrew McCutcheon. We'll talk about it when we come back right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown.